Hello, this is Jack from Historical Archery, and today we're going to look at why the sling became less popular in medieval Europe. Of course, we're talking about a large time period and a broad region, so some generalizations have to be made in order to make this video 10 minutes long. But generally speaking, in ancient time periods, uh, warfare was in a much larger scale in comparison, in comparison to medieval Europe. And what that means is individual accuracy is less important. The sling is very inaccurate in comparison to other weapons like the crossbow, the bow, the javelin. Um, I find the sling is the least accurate um, and the most amount of training involved. Of course, with the javelin, you're shooting at, you're throwing at much closer distances, so it's hard to compare these two because I think both are about the same accuracy in those closer ranges, but then with a further range, the javelin can't even reach, so it's a different time. So I think it's hard to compare with javelins. I think in medieval Europe, the thing that replaced the sling was the crossbow. Both weapons um, shot cheap ammunition because the crossbow can use very broken arrows. It can use very uh, short bolts, which means you don't need to select uh, very like uh, straight arrows. Uh, and you can just select much more smaller segments of bolts, which will allow you to have very cheap ammunition in comparison to arrows. Um, the sling is in the same concept. These two, I think, are the best to compare with, although, of course, there are differences. Uh, but um, I think the crossbow is what replaced the sling. The bows were still used uh, regardless of which time period you're talking about. But one of the biggest problems with slings is it requires a lot of training, um, almost a lifetime of training to be, uh, you know, effective in warfare. I'm um, sure you can have large um, stones like the staff sling. You don't need a lot of skill for those uh, because you're chucking a very large rock and all you got to do is make sure you don't hurt yourself or the people nearby. As long as you can chuck that, it's pretty much a mini trebuchet. Those are quite uh, quite used not only in medieval Europe, it's also used in medieval China. These are siege weapons. Uh, but for skirmishing, the, the, the sling you need to train a lot. I've been practicing for three years now, but I'm still not getting anywhere close to ancient accuracies. Of course, the crossbow costs a lot more money, a lot more time to make, but you see, warfare was not much large in scale anymore. You have smaller armies, so you can spend all that focusing more on quality and instead of quantity. And with the ancient, not saying that ancient slingers were not um, uh, valued, it's just that um, Often they came from the peasantry, even the Balearic slingers, they, they came from what the Romans and the Greeks would consider as barbaric civilizations. Okay, so because you focus more on quality in the medieval era and less people, you want something that has better quality. When you compare the two weapons, the crossbow and the sling, of course the sling has fire, has faster fire rate, but if we assume both people have minimal skill, the crossbow is going to outperform the slinger any day. Um, assuming the slinger only has, I'd say, about one year of training, the, the crossbowman with only one week of training is still going to outperform the slinger in terms of what it's designed to do, which is to deliver skirmishing, to deliver a ranged a component that can be lethal at a significant distance, even against armored people. And yeah, you can have a crossbowman with one week of training to do something a slinger needs years of training to do. A similar comparison can be asked about why the Chinese during the ancient time period did not use slingers. I think because they more used more crossbows and they think that the slingers are um, beneath them. In their opinion, again, the slingers came from likely Tibet and nomadic societies. And for, for the Han people of the time, they just think of them as barbaric civilizations. So they don't really treat, they don't really like using those weapons unless it's very effective. But um, the crossbow compared to the sling, the crossbow is going to have more penetration. Sure, it has a lot less slower rate of fire, but if you have good quality shields, good quality armor, so that you can absorb a lot of the arrows that the, you know or the projectiles that the enemy is throwing at you, you can take you go you know you you have a lot of time to be skirmishing, and so um, I think this is the main reason why the, um, the sling was not being used as much in the medieval era. It's simple. Crossbows took that job. Um, because the bow is still has that very important role in horseback archery, which I'm going to get into another video of why 
uh, slingers uh, weren't used on horseback, but now I'm not saying that slings are not a powerful weapon. Sure, they are powerful if used by skilled slingers with the right ammunition, but you do need that years of training to do it. And if you don't have that training, you might as well not give them the sling because it, it's almost harmless. It's much better to give them like a siege weapon, like, like, like a mini trebuchet, which is a staff sling. When you use those really large rocks, I mean, you don't need a lot of skill to launch a very large rock. And especially during a siege and defense, when it lands at a pretty significant height, that giant rock is going to hurt, regardless if you're wearing armor or not. Or it's going to knock your shield off your hand because of how heavy that rock is. So staff slings were still used during sieges. But for the context of skirmishing in land battles, um, and especially against cavalry or horse archers, which the, the sling used to be uh, used against horse archers, well now the crossbow kind of did that now. Just like how the ancient hand people use crossbows against horse archers, the crossbow can have further distances because you can have lighter GPPs, shorter arrows, um, and still safely shoot these light arrows, and it will shoot further than a horse archer. Um, so yeah, you have a much slower rate of fire, but as long as you have heavy infantry shielding against the, ar uh, against the archers, uh, you know, your shieldmen with heavy armor to protect your crossbowmen, you have a much better weapon in my opinion than a slinger because in dense formations against horse archers the sling is not effective because you're you have to swing this sling around and there's a not enough space with the crossbow you, ha you can use very tight you can see you can still shoot in these very tight formations with the crossbow but with the slinger you need to sway using <laughs> using the sling <laughs> in these wide formations I mean, you need a lot of space to do that. I think the Crusades was one of the turning points of when slings really fell off, you know, because this is where it proves that against horse archers, the crossbow is effective. Anyways, let's do a little bit of sling just for fun. <sighs> the sling is still a good skirmishing weapon. I can hit and run quite effectively. But if you're, you're fighting against a lot of light infantry that can run fast, uh, you're still going to get pursued by these light infantry with melee weapons. So, uh, but against hoplites, the sling is so much better. Um, so in ancient warfare, you can use these guys for skirmishing against heavy hoplites. Ugh. That was a far distance. And <laughs> I mean, in the siege defense, it's a different story, but in field battles, these slingers in medieval context, well, heavy cavalry is a very terrifying thing. And I find in Europe, ancient cavalry was not as important, especially in Greek and Roman warfare. So the main meat of the army was heavy infantry, which don't move fast. So you can hit and run quite effectively in antiquity. Yeah! 